Welcome to Get Started with Lightroom CC, Adobe's beginner tutorial series designed to help you use Lightroom CC, which is Adobe's cloud-centric photo service that's a complete package for editing, organizing, storing, and sharing your photos. Now, Lightroom CC is not just an app. Instead, it's an ecosystem, or you might think of it as a family of apps that you can use across different devices, computers, mobile devices, the web, even Apple TV. And here's the point to remember when you're trying to get a grasp on how it all works. The whole Lightroom CC ecosystem revolves around one central point, the cloud. The cloud-centric nature of Lightroom CC is what makes it unique and allows it to offer you special advantages. The thing you'll notice right off the bat is that your photos and the changes that you make to them are everywhere. Every photo that you add to Lightroom CC on a mobile device, a computer, or a web browser automatically uploads at full resolution to the cloud. And because all your photos are in the cloud, you can view and work with them everywhere that you use Lightroom CC, as long as you're logged in with your Adobe ID. So the same photos that you see here in Lightroom CC on my computer are automatically here on my iPhone too, and here in Lightroom CC in a web browser. And if I edit a photo or organize it into an album on any of these devices, that change automatically syncs through the cloud to Lightroom CC on all my other devices. I could even run Lightroom CC on another computer and access my same photos, which means that I can work on the same photos in Lightroom CC on a desktop and a laptop, or on a machine at home and one at work. I'll walk you through some of these scenarios later in this tutorial series, but for now, just keep in mind that it's the cloud at the center of Lightroom CC that allows all of this to happen. Another benefit of all your photos being in the cloud is that Adobe can apply its amazing artificial intelligence and machine learning technology to make it easier to find photos that you're looking for based on what's in a photo. Later in this tutorial series, I'll show you how that works. And because all your full resolution photos are in the cloud and all your edits are non-destructive of those photos, you can rest assured that you have an automatic backup of all your original photos without having to worry about where to store them and how to manage them across storage drives. So that's a quick overview of Lightroom CC's cloud-based system and what it can do for you. In the rest of this course, we'll spend some time looking at the Lightroom CC desktop app, mostly because it's the newest piece of the Lightroom ecosystem. The good news is that it works a lot like Lightroom CC on your other devices too, so much of what you learn here applies to Lightroom CC on mobile and the web as well. One last thing, don't mix up the relatively new Lightroom CC with the Lightroom that's been around for years now. That one is now called Lightroom Classic CC. Lightroom Classic CC is alive and well, and it offers an alternative desktop-centric workflow based on files and folders that you manage yourself. And you can choose which is best for your needs, Lightroom CC's modern cloud-centric workflow or Lightroom Classic's desktop-centric workflow. So now let's jump in to take a closer look at Lightroom CC. If you want to work with a photo in Lightroom CC, you first have to add that photo to the Lightroom CC ecosystem. In this lesson, I'll show you how to do that in Lightroom CC on a computer, although keep in mind that you can add photos to Lightroom CC from a mobile device or from the web too. We're going to add the sample files for this tutorial, which you can download from the Adobe web page for this tutorial. But what I'm about to show you applies to adding any photos to the Lightroom CC desktop app. When you first launch Lightroom CC on your computer, don't be surprised if you see some photos already in Lightroom CC. Photos that are in the cloud, like this photo that I added to the Lightroom app on my iPhone, should automatically show up in Lightroom CC on your computer too. When you want to add more photos or videos to Lightroom CC on your computer, go to this plus symbol on the left side of the workspace and click. Now, if you had a device like a camera or a camera memory card connected to your computer, you would see a menu at this point from which you could choose to add files directly to Lightroom CC from that device. Otherwise, clicking this plus symbol opens a finder window like this on a Mac or a file explorer window on Windows. 
From here, you'll navigate to the folder on your computer or on a connected external drive that contains the photos you want to add to Lightroom CC. For example, to add these sample files for this tutorial, navigate to the location to which you downloaded the sample files. Mine happen to be on my desktop, so I'll select the Sample Files folder there, and then I'll click the Review for Import button down here. If you're on Windows, you'll click the Add Folder button. That opens this preview window, where you'll see small previews of all the photos in the selected folder. The blue check marks on these photos mean that they will all be added to Lightroom CC. If there's a photo that you're sure you don't want, then just uncheck it, like this. We actually want to bring in all the sample files, so I'm going to go up to the top of this window and check Select All. Over on the right, there's a scroll bar. I'll use it to scroll down. So I can show you that in the bottom row, there's one photo that has a gray overlay and no check mark. That's one that Lightroom CC has recognized as a duplicate of a photo that I already have in my Lightroom CC, so it won't be added again to the program. Other than that, there's really only one other option in this window. If you want, you can go up to the top and choose to include all of these photos in an album during the import process. An album is a group that lets you see the selected photos all in one place. Putting photos in an album is something you could do later inside Lightroom CC, but doing it here saves you that step later. So let's go ahead and make an album for these sample files so you can easily access them in Lightroom CC. If you already have some albums, when you click this button, you'll see them here in a list. We don't have any yet. If you want to make a new album, you can do that by clicking New. Let's name this new album Toot1 for the first tutorial in this series, and then just click Create. All that's left to do is to go up to the top right and click the blue button to add all these photos to Lightroom CC. That closes the preview window and takes you back to the main Lightroom CC workspace. Over on the right you'll see a cloud icon. The blue animation on that icon means that your photos are being uploaded to Adobe's cloud. Just how long it takes to upload your photos to the cloud depends on how many photos you have, the size of your photos, and your internet connection but you can still work on your photos even while they're uploading. Over on the left, I have the My Photos column showing. If your column isn't showing, then click this box icon on the far left. Notice that right now we're just looking at recently added files. If you want to see all your photos, click All Photos here. And if you ever want to see just the photos in the album that we made, the Toot One album, you can come down to the Albums panel and click Toot 1 there. So that's all there is to adding photos. Keep in mind that when you do add photos to Lightroom CC from any device, all those photos are automatically uploaded at their full resolution and are stored for you in Adobe's cloud. So if you move the photos that you started with on your computer or camera, that's okay. You can even delete those, and your full resolution originals will still be safe and backed up in the cloud, and they'll be treated like your master images. You'll have access to them to edit, organize, and share in Lightroom CC on any of your devices. Let's take a quick look around the interface of the Lightroom CC desktop app to give you a sense of the layout and where everything is. Over on the left is a column with options that you'll use when you're reviewing and organizing your photos. Here, you can choose which group of photos to see, whether that's all your photos or those you've just recently added, or you can even choose photos by date. And here, you can choose photos you put in an album or create a new album. You can hide and show this column by clicking the My Photos icon, the one that looks like a file box over here. Then up at the top of the screen, is the search box, where you can search for photos by the content they contain, even if you haven't taken the time to add keyword tags to your photos. For example, I could use this to find my photos that have mountains in them, or water in them. Next to that is the filter icon. Clicking that opens a bar with a number of filters that you can use to find photos by attributes, like stars you've added to them, or flags you've added, or these other characteristics. Over on the right is the share icon. If I select a photo and then click the share icon, 
I can choose to save a copy of the photo with any edits I've applied to my computer so I can share it out myself. And you can share photos directly to Facebook from here too. And to the right of that is the cloud icon. From here, you can check the sync status of your photos. One of the nice things about the Lightroom CC interface is that everything is here on one screen. So when you're ready to edit a photo, you don't have to switch to another module. Just come over to the right side of the screen and click the edit icon here. That opens this column of editing controls and it closes the column over on the left. In the column on the right, there are more editing tools. There's a crop tool, a healing brush tool for removing unwanted content, and some selective editing tools for editing just part of a photo. And these three dots represent a menu of more editing commands, including the command to take a photo directly to Photoshop for further editing that you can't do in Lightroom CC, like combining multiple photos or adding text. The tag icon at the bottom right opens a panel where you can keyword tag your photos, and the info icon displays information about the selected photo. Coming down to the bottom of the screen, there's a film strip that you can use to move between photos one at a time. And down at the very bottom, there's a toolbar where you can add star ratings and flags and view your photos in different configurations, like this large detail view or one of these grid views. We'll look at these view options in more detail in the next lesson in this tutorial. And you can learn more about the other features I pointed out in this tour as you continue through the rest of the tutorials in the Get Started with Lightroom CC tutorial series. You can view your photos in a few different ways in Lightroom CC. When you want to see lots of photos at once, you'll like the grid view. Make sure you've selected the source of photos that you want to view. That may be all photos, or recently added, or by date, or if you're following along 